Hello and welcome to Washington Unplugged. I'm Nancy Cordes. The thwarted Christmas Day bomb attempt has ushered in new security measures at major airports, including full body scanners and pat downs. With that new technology comes new privacy concerns. Should Americans sacrifice their privacy in order to ensure more safety? It's a tricky debate, and I'm joined by legislative director from the ACLU, Michael German, and the former Department of Homeland Security official, Stuart Verdery, to dissect the issues. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining me. First of all, Stuart, can you explain a little bit more uh, for those of us who are learning about some of this technology right. for the first time, how these full body scanners work? Well, it's a couple different types of machines. One is meant to uh, blow air around you to see if there's ex uh, particles of explosives that might be detected that are hidden. Others are called millimeter wave machines. They're meant to look through clothing and other other uh, outer layers to see if there's something hidden that's smuggled, you know, uh, attached to the body. Uh, the question I think at hand is either of these machines, would they have helped deter this particular plot or similar plots? And there, there's a big question about that right now. I mean, there a, a lot of experts say, uh, yes, this is more advanced technology, but it might not necessarily have detected such small amounts of liquids on the body. Nothing is foolproof, that is for sure. And I think the question is, what gives you the best odds of, de of deterring plots, all, one, and detecting people who are willing to go through with them? And obviously, what are the safeguards in place that, that make people feel comfortable with using those types of machines when they're traveling? And Michael, that's what bothers some privacy advocates like you who say these machines are just too invasive because they essentially show an image of your body on a screen that a TSA employee can look at. Right. I, I mean, you mentioned a, a number of different technologies, but with the body scanner technology that actually does create electronic image of your naked body, you know, that has a huge privacy downside. So when the government is looking at the various technologies that are available, whether it's the trace detection puffer machine or something else, you know, first they should determine, is this the most effective technology? With the body scanners, our concern is considering the types of uh, methodologies the terrorists are using today, hiding the device in sensitive areas, using uh, plastic explosives that are sometimes, at least according to some studies, undetectable by these machines, even using uh, body cavities to secret devices. The body scanner machine is not the best technology against the current threat, and it has this huge privacy setback, whereas other technologies like the puffer machine might actually be more effective and have very little privacy setback. So. If we're investing in new technology, let's invest in something at, in a reasonable way that's the most effective with the, less draw, the least drawbacks. So this privacy debate started when these machines first came out and it kind of died down. But now, of course, given the current circumstance and the fact that airports all over the world are now considering buying this technology, it's kind of become a, a front and center issue again. But my understanding is that these images aren't you know, real images like a photograph, it's a virtual image. You don't even see your face and it's being looked at by a TSA employee or some other kind of security official who's in another room who never sees you face to face. Uh, your private parts are kind of blurred out. So it, it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, that this is, uh, you know, on the spectrum of privacy invasions, this isn't one of the, the biggest ones out there. Well, I think, I mean, again, everybody's got their own level of, uh, of comfort on these types of things. I think the question is, this is not the type of image that is going to make a 13-year-old boy very excited here. You know, this is not a, this is not something that's graphic. This is something that is, is designed to find, to fit the need that they have of finding uh, hidden devices and hidden contraband. And I think TSA has reasonable safeguards in place to make sure that these screeners are detached from the people they're screening, mm -hmm. that they are, the images are not stored and the like. I think the question is, you know, is this the best technology? Um, nothing is foolproof. And the question is, can you come up with a layered system of defenses with better IDs and better physical checks and better watch lists, none of which by themselves are perfect, but put them together and they're going to give you the best chance to deter the plots that we know are out there. And it sounds like that's kind of what you're saying too, is that, you know, the privacy issues notwithstanding, there are real questions about this technology and whether it would catch the kinds of things that terrorists are now attempting to smuggle through airports. Right, and, and that there should be a number of levels that, you know, the most intrusive technique does not have to be used against every traveler, only where the government has some factual basis for believing that this technique is the most effective and has the least drawbacks, or we have the most evidence to justify using that type of intrusive techniques. And one of the things we have to remember is, you know, our, our liberty was very hard won, and, you know, we shouldn't sacrifice it on the promise of better security. You know, if this is not actually the best device to, to make us safer, let's, let's look for more technology rather than investing in a system that, that has already undergone testing and found, 
been found wanting. The British authorities tested this and said it was not an effective technique, mm -hmm. and, and that's why they stopped using it. So, you know, while there's this real, you know, urge to do something, and you it know, sounds good, you know, it, full right. body scanners, right. and and actually, there's a lot of, as you said, there's a lot of controversy in Great Britain right now because um, the prime minister has said, has said we're going to buy these, we're going to use them, we're going to expand, and other members of his government are saying, well, hold on, we're not sure that these really work that well. If they if they aren't the be all end all, Stuart, you're a former FBI uh, official. What what is out there? Well, we definitely need to do more on research and development of technology that will do a better job with lower impact on travelers. Make, we need to make sure people can get through in a reasonable amount of time, that they can make their flights and that kind of thing. So we have, we have starved the research and development budget at Homeland Security the last couple of years. We need to do more in that area. The question is, though, we, we can't wait for R&D to come two, three, five years down the road. What do we do with the best tools that we have? It is not just a physical screening issue. Every passenger should be screened for explosives. Right now, that I think most Americans would be surprised that they're not. Most passengers are not screened for explosives. Mm -hmm. They're screened for weapons only. And then what can we do on the watch list side, which is hugely important on making sure that connecting the dots from intelligence to your border enforcement folks are made. That's the weakness here we've seen that the president has identified. Now, I, would, I think we would probably agree that we should at the same time couple the watch list uh, issue with redress. If somebody feels that they've been erroneously watch listed or they have a name unfortunately that's similar to somebody on a watch list give them a chance to clear their name nobody should have an electronic stain on their record they have no ability to to appeal to. Mm -hmm. So that has to be part and, part and parcel of our enhanced security as well. I just want to ask you this one last question about these new TSA rules that have gone into effect where the TSA is essentially asking the rest of the world to step up screening on people who are coming from or through 14 countries. Uh, and and some, um, some people are saying that's profiling. You know, basically you're, you're just saying anyone who comes from this country, whether you have any kind of record or not, you're going to have to go through these more invasive procedures. You're going to have a full body pat down or you're going to have this x-ray screening and your bags are going to be searched. Is that something you have an issue with? That's exactly what it is. It's a proxy for profiling and it will be just as effective as racial profiling in other contexts. Um, and, and, you know, that goes a long way to also just discussing the watch list, which has you know, the Terrorist Screening Center watch list has 1.1 million names mm -hmm. on it, you know. I mean, it's obviously completely bloated and un unworkable, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have the names of real threats to security on it. So, so that's a, a, a process that is in grave need of reform, and we've known that for some time. On um, the other hand, these are countries where we know that there are terrorist threats. Well, we already, you call it profiling or call it whatever you want, we already do this right now. We have a system where People from 35 countries do not have to get a visa to come to the United States. Everybody else does. People from a certain number of countries, when they arrive in the United States, go to secondary processing for a quick interview and a full fingerprint mm -hmm. and a search of their belongings. People from the other rest of the world do not. So we've already kind of marched down this road of having risk management for people who come to the country. The question is, is it targeted appropriately? We do know there is definitely risk um, from people from Western countries who have Al Qaeda has uh, corrupted. Uh, we see England has seen a number of plots uh, and attacks. Uh, we know it's not just people from the Middle East who are of concern. So I think, can you do both? Can you both target your risk on people, travelers that have some baseline level of concern, but also put everybody through the minimal level that you, Americans expect on explosive detection? That's, I think you can do both at the same time. I talked to one expert yesterday who said it's the kind of thing that constantly needs to be fine-tuned based on the intelligence that you're getting. It's a, it's a sensitive topic. And I think one thing to keep in mind is, you know, searching me and, and the two of you, with whatever, t is a complete waste of resources. You know, searching an innocent My one-year-old baby was right. searched uh, <laughs> coming so, back from Copenhagen so, last week. So what we have to keep in mind is if we're expanding the universe of people we're going to do that with, we have to take resources away from investigation. So right. rather than having an investigator at the embassy mm -hmm. who, when somebody walked in and said, I think my son's a threat to security, mm -hmm. could have followed up on that information and made sure that it got to the people it needed to, mm -hmm. we have people searching innocent people because they come from a particular country with no other reason. And as we know, there are already international airports that are saying we just don't have the manpower to be able to carry out this new TSA directive because it is so so time consuming and so so resource consuming as well. That's all the time that we have for today. But this is a, a really tough topic, a sensitive topic. So I really appreciate both of you being here today Thank you. to Thank discuss you. it. Thank you so much for coming by. Michael German of the ACLU, Stuart Verdery, formerly of the Department of Homeland Security. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. And thank you for watching Washington Unplugged. You can find us here every day at 1230 p.m. on CBSNews.com. I'm Nancy Cordes. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.